call all the meetings of all the meetings of people we keep especially for meetings. Gentlemen, good news. The electric telephone has been installed. Hip, hip, hip. I hope you open the windows of the... The people in Buckingham Palace could hear us. It could mean an OB. Now <laughs> uh, then, um, any questions? Um, Aye, I've got one. I've got a rash to me right hero. What's that got to do with the electric telephone? Well, every time I put it against me ear all the dirt. Well, then use the left, the left ear all. But I can't. It's a right-handed phone. <laughs> well, uh, ah, turn around and face the other way. Well, I won't be able to see who I was talking to. Uh, Look, I claim damages, I do. He's, he's within his rights, I tell you. Make out a check to his right ear roll and put the rates up tuppence in the pound. Tuppence? This will ruin why one. Oh, poor Sir Frank. <laughs> there it goes again. Give me my telephone answering hat. Thank you. Hello? Yes? I see. Yes? I see. Gentlemen, bad news. Some gentleman who apparently has traveled extensively in Australia says that there is still a time at large in Foggy London Town. That's impossible in Foggy in London Town. Rubbish, rubbish. Down. Rubbish. All trams have been melted down and made into melted down trams. But uh, everyone? All except the one you're living yes, in. Yes, well, we are not with it. Say, wait a moment, sir. It's wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the tram map on this wall. Yes. There's still one flag stuck in it. There is still one tram running. Oh, no. Oh, I'll lose my OB. I'll... There he goes. Oh. He's fainted. He's fainted downwards, crushing his calibs. Oh. Here, hold his mouth open while I force this brandy down my throat. Oh. Now he looks better. So do you. So do you, Thomas. This little flag in the tram map means that number 38A is still at large in foggy London town. Oh, no. Oh, when, when, when did it leave the depot? Or as Cheyenne says, the depot. Where did it leave the depot? 1923. He's running late. <laughs> We'd better track this tram down or we'll all be out of a job, fellas. Is my official ministry car ready, sir? Oh, your ministry car, yes, sir. It's just done your shopping and taken yeah, the kids yes, to school. Well, yes, well, yes, well. Before this night is out, that tram has got to be in the cab. Yeah. And knock it down. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Put him on the retired list, will you, Tom? <laughs> now, off you go, Shag Nasty. Along the dark streets of England, the search went on. Nip, nippity, nip. <laughs> Finally, the tram was located in the London end of the Eastern Suburbs Railway. Yeah. We... We've been sitting at this end of the hole for 20 years with a stick order for the Australians to come through. <laughs> and you say that you remember a number 38A tram disappearing down this hole? Personally, sir. It come belting through here with a Lord Mayor on the front giving a speech and covered in all the next tomatoes and Jane Mansfield jelly. That's the tram. Yes. That's it. Come on, men. Follow me. <laughs> Inside the tunnel, it was pitch black and dark as well. I, luckily the tunnel was only a hundred yards wide, so I was able to stretch out my arms and feel along both sides. Look. <laughs> 
What? There. There, its rusty side gleaming in the light of a flickering three-volt finger, was the long-lost 38A tram. A bed of roses grew on the driving platform. A simple string of washing hung over from a the overhead cable. And the smell of sausages came from a gas stove on the top platform. Anybody in? Right on the wall. I went you through, rest on the wall, past one and two. When you wake in, I wear a green. In the middle, in the middle, in the Who is that out there telling you all that? Madam? Hello, sailor. <laughs> Another sailor. We're from the tram depot. It's an announcement from the tram depot, sailor. Oh. Look, madam, exactly who are you? I'm exactly me, monitor. Conductor H number three. Number three. Now listen, number three. <laughs> this tram should have been on the scrap heap ten years ago. So should you, but the look of you. What, what? What's that? Why, right, look, I can't leave this tram. I've got my passenger to think of. Passenger? And what idiot would sit on a tram for ten years? Who so does? <laughs> hey, the voice came from a man using a discarded body and a head with three nostrils. <laughs> Let's see your ticket. It's a bit dusty. Hey, hey, wait a minute, lad. This is a child's ticket. You're an adult. Wasn't when I got on. <laughs> Something in the man's upturned face appealed to me. He threw a brick at it. Look, I'm a postman. I've got to get this urgent pigeon to the prime monster of for foggy London Town. What? We must hurry. <coughs> that afternoon, the Prime Minister read this urgent pigeon to Parliament. Gentlemen, gentlemen, a British trooper has defeated Chips Rafferty at the Eureka Stockade. <laughs> was being crushed into a block. You think I'm going to get off? <laughs> wow. Are you sure you wouldn't change your mind? Oh, she must think I'm mad. Everybody thinks I'm mad. Even I think I'm mad. But I'm not, folks. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Ray. I'm not the only one, Wonderful. Now an announcement. It came to pass that all these old English crushed trams were bought by the Melbourne City Council. As the chairman so wisely said, You never know. We may need them. <laughs> and it came to pass that they did. <laughs> Melbourne decided, if you'll pardon my chuckle, decided <laughs> to build a bridge. <laughs> Despite criticism and a dog called Tom, Mel <laughs> Melbourne Council interviewed potential bridge builders. And what is your name, sir? Jim Shoes. Oh. Mr. Shoes. That's an unusual name. Are you in the phone book? No, for me. Oh, that's good. It will save us ringing you. I'm afraid you haven't the necessary qualifications. Well, uh, what are the necessary qualifications? Well, first thing, my wife must like you. And second, you are not a relative of any member of the council. <laughs> Son! Twice, son! I'll have me revenge for this as sure as I play one bed in children's yard! <laughs> revenge in the key of C minor! Farewell! And so work on the King's Bridge commands. 
Penelope, darling. Penelope. Hello, darling. Lower the foundation, Gerda, dear. Oh, <laughs> I got right, lads. Lift all together, coppers. <laughs> Drop it here. Oh, it's no good there. It'll have to go about nine inches to the right. Why? Right. It's on me foot, mate. <laughs> well, that's all right. I don't know why we're fully you well, sir. Uh, uh, all right, the boys. I'll hold his hands. All right, sir. Now, what boy? Once again, a nice to please a fool. Oh, and one more lovely big fool, eh, fool? That's a good car. Anyone want to hire a bloke with a 20 foot long leg? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Mister, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Don't get up. It's all right. I'll get the stretch. No, I don't want to be stretched anymore, mate. <laughs> Well, you just take some of the lads at the work have been pulling your leg. <laughs> you get a fat up the chest, mate. <laughs> Soon supplies of steel were arriving from the depot, all made from old English trams, among them the old 38A. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it appears it is going to be a long time arriving, so here is a jolly song I've just recorded. Have you heard the bill the flipper of the town of Mallyman? The times are going hard with him, in fact the man was drunk. So he just around a notice to his neighbours, what 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 to in this, incidentally, I play a part, a captain of industry, and, God, it really suits me. Action! Light! Camera! Oh. Through the sound of distant dentistry, Isol takes charge. Men! Yes, yes. Men, this bridge is going to come on at once. Yes, sirree. So, as my father said, put your shoulder to the wheel. Nose the grindstone, your back to the wall. Best foot forward. Bend your back. And keep your head up high. He must be a funny shape. <laughs> Eccles. Yep. Just the man for the first golden rivet ceremony. Yep. Take the sledgehammer. I'll hold the golden rivet, and when I nod my head, I want you to hit it. <clears throat> Would you say that again in front of the witnesses? Certainly. All right. I'll hold the rivet, and yep. when I nod my head, hit it. I hit it. Okay. Hit it, yes. Okay, ready? Now! Hit. Good shot, Eccles. Right on the rivet. <laughs> <laughs> that fooled you all, didn't it? Eh? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, my finger! <laughs> now, to make up the disappointment of that little joke, here is Miss Patricia Ridgway to sing a song from the waist upwards. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Bridgeway. She's mad about me. Do you hear? Mad about me. And can you blame her? Look at me. Going on for 50 and as virile as ever. You know what they say? The older the fiddle, the better the tune. Yes, but you're decent, Miss Clinton. Now, ladies and gentlemen, will you take your seats for part three of the King's Bridge Saga? ta -da! Melbourne Bridge Building Committee. Mm. Uh, yeah. uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, that's no matter at all. Listen, I fear that the bridge will have to be widened to take one lane of traffic. Hey, 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 what for? What, 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 what for, hey? Haven't you read the highway code? Not at all. I'm waiting to make a film of it. I say that the building program is being mismanaged. Yes, public money is being squandered. Darn rubbish. I've never squandered public money. I saw you squandering some the other day. It wasn't me. It was, it was my one identical arm. twin. It was a one-armed brother. Good <laughs> Look, uh, here are the company's books. 
Lady Lolita, Lady Chatelet, Lady Rose, Lola, <laughs> Secrets of Andrea. Yes, these books appear to be in order. I apologize in the key of E flat. I accept your apology in uh, G minor. Ta. Ah. <laughs> Would you like to elaborate on that? You can do what you like on it. <laughs> Now, I have here a letter from the firm of Jim Shoes and Company. Okay. Yes, that's the company we turned down. I'll read it. I'll read the letter. Good heavens, whoever wrote the title was an absolute pig. I, I, what does it say? Signed, <laughs> Jim Shoes in C minor. Yes, for Mint months and months, Jim Shoes had worked on building a giant seaborne insulting machine. Gentlemen, this machine is the world's biggest raspberry blower. Should we have a demonstration? Right. Stand by, stand to leave up. Ah! Fair combustion. <laughs> Raise pressure. <laughs> right. Switch on insult. <laughs> Wonderful. Here's a towel. No. <laughs> How much do you want for it? Ah, it's not for sale, darling. This machine is to insult Melbourne Council and then to be destroyed. You refuse to sell the plin pawns and plans of this machine to the government? Yes. Have you anything more to say? Yes. Switch on. <laughs> Work on the bridge went steadily ahead. At first, there were three months behind schedule. But by hard work and government planning, they were soon six months behind. <laughs> the commemoration tree was planted by the Lady Mary, watched by an enthusiastic audience. <laughs> but soon, the first blow was to fall. Midnight, a sleeping Melbourne are aroused by this sound from offshore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Penelope. What was that? Wake up. Hand me my telescope now. Let me oh. 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 Wait, I, I see it. I can see it. This looks sharp. This looks good. Uh, there must be hell out there. <laughs> this, uh, this is a ship. It's a ship for the big machine and the gramophone horn point. Oh. <laughs> Must be the worst of Graham Kennedy. <laughs> he can't go to tea parties like that. All the night. Melbourne was bombarded with amplified raspberries from the great, great insulting machine. By dawn, the entire city was deaf. What? And men working on the... <laughs> and men working on the King Bridge did not hear the cry that came from inside a giant supporting iron girder. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the fatal crack appeared in King's Bridge. It was, in fact, Minnie Bannister who'd gone down with her tram, cutting her way up. <laughs> Meantime, from out at sea... Poor <laughs> Melbourne. Good night, and here to conclude the program is my latest record. That was the Idiot Weekly with a cast of over 100, some even older. Music by Gussie, produced by McLeod, plans of the mechanical insulter are now on sale at Sydney Town Hall. Oh, my boy, say, oh, the other.